Now that our project has an image the user selected, the next step is to let them apply varying core image filters to it. Now to start with, we're gonna work with just one filter, but shortly we'll extend that using a confirmation dialog. If you wanna use core image in our apps, we first gotta add two extra imports at the top of contentview.swift. One is import core image, and the other is import core image dot CI filter built-ins. Next, we need both a context and a filter. Now context from core image is an object responsible for rendering a CI image to a CG image, or in more practical terms, effectively for converting the recipe for an image, all the things we're doing to it, to an actual series of pixels we can work with. And again, a CI image isn't pixels, it's just a recipe. Now contexts are expensive to create. So if you plan to render many images, it's a good idea to create a context once when your app starts up and just keep it alive. As for the filter, we'll be using cifilter.sepiatone as our default, but because we'll make it flexible in the future to change the filter, I'll mark it at state. So we'll say here, at state, private var, our current filter is cifilter.sepiatone. And then let context equals a CI context. That isn't gonna change. Now with these two in place, we can now write a method that will process whatever image was imported. That means it's gonna set our uh, sepia filter intensity based on this filter intensity property here. We read, read back from the slider. We'll then run the transformation, read the output image back from the filter, ask our CI context to render it, then place a result into our image property here, so it's rendered on screen nicely. So, let's write that now. We'll say, func apply processing. So again, the first thing we'll do is set the intensity of the filter. We'll say the current filter has an intensity of the float of our filter intensity. Sadly, yes, uh, the sepia tone uh, filter attached to this core image context here, does want to use float rather than double for its values. This makes core image feel even older, but don't worry, it's gonna go away soon. Okay, after that, we're gonna read the output image from our filter. We'll say guard let output image is our current filter to output image. Otherwise, return. If we can't read one, we can't process stuff, it's fine. We'll then convert that output image into actual pixels at a particular size. Uh, so we'll say guard let CG image be our context create CG image from the output image and that's right and there so from will be our output image dot extent the actual size we want to work with. Don't read part of it, read all of it. And if that fails, oops sorry if that fails then bail out. At this point, we have actual pixels in our CG image. We can now use that to create a UI image uh, and then use that to make a Swift UI image. So we'll say our UI image is a UI image with a CG image of that CG image. And then our processed image is an image with UI image of that UI image. So <laughs> the CI image, the CG image, the UI image and the Swift UI image you got to use them all. It's painful, but it's how it works, so we're stuck with it. Okay, the next job is to change the way this load image method works here, because right now it ends with a more code to come comment, but really it needs to send whatever image was chosen into the sepia tone filter, then call apply processing down here to make the magic actually happen. Now, core image filters have a dedicated input image property let us send in a CI image for the filter to work with. But often this is, <laughs> I don't know what to say, it's just thoroughly broken. It's bizarrely broken sometimes. Your app will just crash. I, yeah, I'm not gonna say any more about that. It is much safer to use a filter's set value method with a particular key name, KCI input image key. So we'll do it the safe way. Our begin image is the CI image, the image being our input image. Convert the UI image to a CI image. 
and then call current filter dot set value our begin image for the key KCI input image key and then call apply processing. Yes, I know it's weird, but I didn't write it, folks. <laughs> I'm just telling you how it works. If you run the app now, you will see the basic app flow working great. We can now tap to import a picture, choose the waterfall. There's our sepia tone thing. That's a half sepia tone. But you'll notice that if I slide left and right, nothing happens. So even though we are saying for sure, well, change the filter based on filter intensity, it's not doing that. Now what's happening here ought not to be too surprising, even though the slider is correctly changing value of filter intensity, changing that property won't automatically trigger our apply processing method. Instead, we'll do that by hand, by telling Swift UI, watch filter intensity with an on change modifier. Again, this can go anywhere in your Swift UI view hierarchy, go over here, next to nav title, for example. But in this situation, again, I prefer to do it next to the place that's changing the value if possible, which for us is the slider up here. Of course, if multiple things change the same value or it's not quite so specific as like that's changing the value whatever, then I probably put it elsewhere like the end of the view, but here it's quite specific, that changes the value. And so we can say uh, here, I'm gonna use an on change of filter intensity, call our apply processing method, like that. So with that in place, you can now go ahead and run the app now. Be warned, the simulator obviously is doing a lot of extra work, pretend to be an iPhone. It is nowhere near as fast as a modern iPhone, even a vaguely modern iPhone, like an iPhone 11, right? Even a 10. The, the core image filters run lightning fast on real devices. So if you're thinking, well, it's slow, maybe it's a simulator, but it's fine device. Anyway, let's press the uh, picture, choose that one here and drag it around. And there we go, changing the sepia tone from zero up to maximum. Don't worry, it feels slow. It is lightning fast on device.